when you're hitting your irons well, give the viewers a sense of what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're really aiming for. Well, I kind of <coughs> had two shots um, when I'm hitting my approaches. I n normally hit like an easy one, so mm -hmm. I follow through right to the follow through. Or if I need to hit a lower one, um, a bit harder one, I tend to kind of like Tommy Fleetwood, like kind of stop it here yeah. and pull it back in my stance and really compress it okay. and um, with a little bit of a draw. So those shots I really hit very well. So we saw that with a six iron, didn't we, at five? Yeah. So hit the two versions if you can. So kind of the easy one first of all. Yeah. So I'm just really thinking of getting to my follow through and uh, keeping good rhythm. I've got a six iron. Beautiful. Lovely little ball flight right to left as well. Nice little draw. We can get you just to hit that Cut abbreviated off. follow through, yeah. Yeah, and if, if I want to get an extra five yards out of it as well, um, this is my favourite shot to play. We'll look out for the Tommy Fleet with follow through, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Flies a lot straighter, too. <laughs> it does, and a lower ball flight. Celine, very quickly, if I can jump you in, same thing, if you just hit one shot for us. Again, for you, with some of the approach play, some of the iron play, what is absolutely key for you? Yeah, I mean, I didn't hit that many irons, <laughs> but the few, I <laughs> uh, the few I did, I just tried to um, um, make solid contact yeah. because, uh, you know, the uh, uh, ground is a little bit wet, so you want to make sure that you hit the ball first. And I just had to, uh, to remind myself to keep my angles throughout the swing, and that's pretty much all I think Perfect. About. Okay, hit one for us. Your first time in the sky zone. Yeah. George is a pro at this. She's been here with us a few times. <laughs> Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Again, a nice little ball flight right to left. Nice draw. Very impressive, girls. One thing that I would always say when I look at you, Justin, is you have the most beautiful posture and balance. And I think when you look at all great ball strikers, they look so good. Do you have a, a preference in balance? Do you Are you conscious of balance in your setup? Yeah, absolutely. I think that is, um, you know, the, the, the simple things are often overlooked, but that, that's huge for me. Um, I, I have so much awareness of the ground with my setup and throughout my swing. That's kind of why I, a large reason why I wear these shoes, because they have a very flat sole and I have you know, good proprioception and feel of the ground. So that's something that's massively important to me. Um, width of stance, important. When I get too narrow, obviously you can laterally move around too much. So making sure I have a good base. Ball position, again, if the ball's too far back, I can shift ahead of it way too easily. So you know, the ball, it feels forward to me. It's not going to be forward, but... So but, it, but it is more towards your, your left heel. Yeah. So that will be, that's your default ball. For, For all sure. your iron shots, driver as well, or do you only move it around to change flight? I move it around to change flight. If I want to hit a draw, I put it back because you obviously you hit the ball earlier on the circle. You know, obviously the, the club is planing in from the inside and it's going to move towards the inside on the way through. So it's kind of coming around in a circle. So the more you put the ball back, it's much easier to hit it into out because the club's coming in from that angle. So if I want to hit a fade, I'll actually put the ball up in my stance too because it's my, I have more time for the club to swing left. Um, so I move it around to shape it. But for a, for a standard shot, my default is to make sure I'm not too far back. So that's something I'm always keeping my eye on. And then really my backswing is, uh, I use the word develop. I let the backswing develop and that's my key for rhythm. You know, I'm not trying to rush it to the top, I'm really it develop. And, and essentially what I'm trying to do there is kind of develop the tension like a coil, like a spring. Um, you don't have to do it quickly. You know, you really, I'm, I'm really working into my right side, but, but doing it smoothly and slowly. So talk to us about how we shape shots. When you're going to try and hit, hit a little low draw for us, and, and what would you do differently to try and hit a little bit of a low kind of chase draw out there? Just, just think it and do it. Think it and do it. Freddie Couple style, think it and do it. Um, low draw, um, for me, I may try and get my grip a little bit stronger just to help me release it, come in, um, try and keep the hands leading club face, which will start with kind of the right hip and shoulder clearing. That way you can keep it down and trap it um, without getting too steep. Uh, Ball position change a little bit? I may go back a little bit, um, but a lot of times I try not to move it too much. Um, you get back and you start getting too steep. Um, and, and with that creating spin, 
and you don't want spin going into the wind. I think that's the one thing that a lot of people do is they, historically we put the golf ball way back and hit feel like to hit it, it lower, beat down on it. But we know so much more about spin and how that affects the golf ball now. And one of the things that we always hear that you guys talk about is, especially in the wind, trying to hit that flat low one that doesn't rise up and get up. And, and I think a lot of people just put it too far back and then they hit down on it and they spin it up. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, another way is, is sometimes it's going up a club where you're not having to try and go down on it, swing at it as hard. You know, you're putting a little bit smoother swing on it. You're hitting the window that you want, but it's coming out with less spin and a little bit more of a penetrating flight. All right, so a little bit back in stance, a little bit stronger grip, a little low, punchy. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now. To kind of ride the wind, right or left to right one today. So the wind here. No, that was drawing. It was just the wind holding it. It was perfect. That's what we'd want so to do. So we, we've got a lot of wind here, as we can see all these flags. Yep. You're going to aim a lot more to the left and try and ride the wind here. So shifting where you're aiming and, and shifting anything else. For the most part, the feet and your alignment, where you kind of want to start the ball. Um, for me, if I'm really trying to move it. I would line up there and then almost point my, the face of my club at the target uh, where I want the ball to finish and then swing down my footpath, then creating the ball to move. Um, it becomes different when you're trying to hit a lower or a high shot. Um, and then in conditions like this, you really don't have to try and move it much when the wind's you know, blowing as hard as it can. Um, so a lot of times you try and start it at a point and then let it just drift with the wind. So we're going to ask you, that was kind of the low draw back into the wind. Now we're going to try and hit the high fade and ride the wind. Okay. So a little bit more left. Yeah, a little left, ball may go up a little bit, and for me, I'll try and just stay back and keep my spine angle from going forward. I'll get a little tilt there to help launch it up a little bit. You want high or high? High. Okay. High, high. A high balloon ball. <laughs> what we've got here is this Zen putting green. We can slope it. We put a map on it. So. We've got a lot of kids watching, and, and, and they have so many different shots when they're playing as juniors. Ball below your feet where, you know, Lynx golf especially, never really a flat lie. So not we're going to go ahead and adjust this. You want me to get the, up Yeah, there. go ahead. We're going to put the ball <laughs> below your feet. We're not going to make okay. it too difficult. No, not too So severe. what do you do differently, Westy? Um, just the basics to hit it when the ball is below your feet. I might have a bit more, uh, bit more angle in my body. Um, Obviously, if you stand straight upright like you would on a normal lie, then the, t the toe's probably going to be up. So I try and get a little bit more over it, maybe flex my knees a little bit more. A little bit wider stance or normal? A little bit wider stance, maybe, yeah. And obviously, uh, when the ball's below your feet, your swing goes a little bit more upright, and uh, you're more likely to hit a bit of a fade. Today, the wind's howling off the left here, so I would aim even further left. But if there were no wind and I was on a lie like this, I'd aim five yards, six yards left. And, and I think that's one of the in. important things to remember that the slope is going to have a dramatic effect on the shape of the shop. So where you aim, you're going to want to aim even further, further left. So if the flag is start, you want to aim maybe five, maybe 15, 20 in a wind like this, you might be aiming a long way to yeah, the Yeah, I mean, I could be aiming 20, 30 yards left in a wind like this uh, with the wind blowing so severely off the left and a hanging lie, you know, with the, the, the ball below my feet. So. Okay, so a little bit wider stance, a little bit more yeah. angle in the body to fight the gravity effect. Yeah, and I, also generally I'm a fader of the golf ball as well, so that is, it makes an even bigger difference to me. Sometimes when I'm practicing at home, I try and get on a lie like this because... It accentuates. I, yeah, and ideally I would like my swing to be a little bit more upright, so I will get on a lie like this and that will create a, a more upright swing All for right, me. All right, well, go ahead and hit one for us. So the little bit wider stance, a little bit angle in the body, aiming yeah. left. Yeah. Nice, smooth tempo. See, it's, uh, it's fading a little bit left to right there. One Pretty of the well things also I think that, that happen when people get on these um, uneven lies is sometimes they tend to swing a little bit too hard. You want to have that nice, smooth rhythm so that gravity doesn't move you down the slope. Absolutely. If you start swinging fast, then... Uh, Gravity will start to pull you onto your toes, and you, it can create all sorts of problems. You ideally want to stay very centered and just turn around your center and collect the ball. So that's the ball below your feet. Go ahead and step on that. Now we're going to put the ball above your feet. You're saying this thing won't move with my weight on it. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how many cheeseburgers we've had. All right. So now the ball's dramatically above your feet. Yeah. So 
the direction the ball is going to curve is the opposite of when it was below your feet, which is now from right to left. Yeah, it would be normally, but obviously the wind's right. hailing off the left, so it's probably just going to hold straight. Um, but I would do uh, a pretty similar sort of thing. I would try and get my body angled slightly differently to the slope. With it being above my feet, it's going to make my swing a little bit more rounded, as opposed to the other lie where it was a little bit more upright. And I would expect it to just draw and maybe hold against the wind. So I will try do nothing different with my swing other than get set into it on the setup and then just make a normal swing and, and obviously don't try anything too hard. Perfect. And it's not sort of it's not gonna move it's much. It's not fading today. as much. It's drifting a little bit on the wind, but it's it's holding sort of. I think it's interesting for, for junior golfers out there, if you're trying to draw the golf ball and learn how to hit it from right to left, this is a lie that's actually really good to help you feel that. As you said, as a fader, you actually go the opposite way and get that feeling. When you were a kid, did you go out and play on a lot of these unleavened lies and teach yourself and learn how to hit these shots? Yeah, I mean, where I grew up as a kid, playing on uh, starting at Worksop Golf Club, there's a lot of uneven lies there anyway. You do get a few flat ones, but there were a lot of downhill lies and left to right and right to left. So I learned to play off these kind of lies. And, you know, when we go somewhere like Augusta, you, can, you know the severity of the lies uh, Augusta National. You really need to know how the ball's going to react and how your swing's going to react off these different lies. What my problem has been a lot of times, I pull with the left side a little bit and, and then you know, hands are leading a bit too much and, and you can't really get a proper release and, and keep the pressure on the shot. So, for me, it's, it's more about getting, getting it down early enough into, into position to, to be able to, to release it and take it through, really. So, it's more as much of a sequencing thing as, as anywhere, anything else. One of the things I hear you and Pete talk about a lot, and I, and I think it's one of my favorite things that Pete talks about as an instructor, is putting pressure onto the golf ball. And I see you guys sometimes do kind of some drills and some little half-shot drills. Can you go ahead and demo one of those and just tell us what you're trying to feel when you do that? Well, it's more to, to get the... If, if you go to a, about a 9 o'clock position, obviously if you pull, you you're never going to get down, so you need, to, you need to square the club up by going down, so it's really the pressure is from the right side, and then the, the left hand would, would keep the loft on, on the shot. And I'm left-handed, so I mean, I, I like to, to feel my control in my left hand. So I'm, I'm a left-handed guy playing right-handed, right and I guess Phil is the same, the opposite, so that seemed to be the, the common denominator last year, right? So go ahead and hit the little drill swing that you do and then put it into motion in a full swing. So this is the little drill to feel the club getting down in front. To get it here. Currently trying to move the golf ball left to right, right to left. I'm, I'm pretty neutral. I mean, when I'm swinging well, I don't put a lot of side spin on the shots. And if anything, it might be a smidge of draw when I'm kind of my neutral would be just slight, like this draw coming out. Fade is not normally my, my go-to shot. I only play so that one pressure, really So under pressure, you're when... going to feel like you turn one? Yeah, a little bit. So that same feeling of getting the club back out in front, keeping the loft on it. That was better than the first attempt. Yeah. So we look at the little track man data there, but 14 degrees of launch. Let's go see so you get the carry. Uh, 196, 209. Yeah, 96 is, I mean, we're not quite race speed here, and we've got a bit of, yeah, a bit of health as well. So, I mean, I think that's pretty much, I'd say about 194, 95 would be my, my six iron right. standard. So How far, if you need to, Henry, can you go ahead and jump on a six iron and, and feel like you get that extra out of it? Or would you just go up to another well, club? 178 meters, which would be about 195 yards, right? That, that's, that's kind of, I mean, I hit it pretty hard standard-wise. So I, don't, I don't think I have a lot more in the tank, but <laughs> maybe another five we can find. Want me to hit one as hard as yeah. I can? See what we can do with the six. Really. You take the responsibility if this burger comes up, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. It's launched pretty much around the same. Let's see if we got a little bit more carry out of it. 202, so pretty close, about five yards. Yeah. He's pretty good.